Hey, how's it going, guys? I wanted to create this video to address a question I get asked about pretty frequently, and I thought that rather than uh, just talking about it in the comment section, I can just go ahead and create a video addressing the subject at hand, and that subject is on azelic acid. And here is a bottle of azelic acid. It's a 15% solution, and you can also get it in 5 and 10% solutions. Some people get skin irritation with the 15% solution. So what is it prescribed for, typically? It is prescribed for acne, and in that regard, I think it's very effective, but I don't get asked about it because of its uh, effectiveness for treating acne, but rather I get asked about it because apparently it's a very good treatment for hair loss. And it's an interesting question because this is something I have a bit of a history with. I first came across azelic acid as a hair loss treatment in the late 2000s when there was this website from this doctor. Uh, named Dr. Lee, and he would. Uh, Dr. Lee was uh, notable because he sold many topical hair loss solutions that had compounds of various different drugs like finasteride, topical finasteride, topical spironolactone, and he also sold a minoxidil azelic acid solution, and they were pretty popular and a lot of people, I don't know if they swore by it, but a lot of people thought felt that azelic acid was effective for uh, hair loss because of a particular study, which I'm going to get to in a moment. But eventually, uh, Dr. Lee's website did shut down. I think maybe he was arrested for selling a lot of drugs without a prescription, but you can still find azelic acid minoxidil solutions online. One of them is known as lipogain. I think it's actually minoxidil, 5% minoxidil, 5% uh, retin, uh, I mean, 5% azelic acid, and also I think it has retinol in it as well. And I think uh, retinol, like um, retin-A and uh, tretinoin, is effective as a uh, skin exfoliator, so that might improve absorption, absorption of certain topicals, so I'm fine with that. But in the case of azelic acid, um, I can see why many people might think it's an effective solution, and I'd like to tell you, it is an effective solution for hair loss, but unfortunately that wouldn't be true. I don't think it's very effective. And I think that the reason why a lot of people come to the conclusion that it is an effective uh, treatment for hair loss is just their failure to disseminate proper research and understand what is uh, good research and what is bad research. And what I've heard people cite to me uh, very often is a study, which I'm going to link in the uh, in the description section, on azelic acid, which was uh, an in vitro study that was from 1988. And I don't know if they've had subsequent in vivo studies. I don't know what like the sample sizes were, if they did have studies like that. But anyways, uh, in an in, in vitro study is when like you take something that's done like within the human body, like in, in, in a Petri dish or something, and you do a study and just see what the, the results are. And it's, it's good for like developing mechanistic data. And what the study showed, and it looks very promising, is that there was a 90% inhibition of 5-alpha reductase. And of course, that's the enzyme that's responsible for converting uh, uh, testosterone into DHT. And finasteride is about 60% inhibition. So on paper, it certainly looks like from this abstract that azelic acid is even more effective than finasteride at inhibiting DHT. However, I think the problem people make with a study like this is that they have to understand there's a lot more going on in the body uh, than just what can be uh, just demonstrated in a petri dish. So that doesn't mean that in vitro studies are valueless. I think an in vitro study can be very good for establishing in a hypothesis, but with a hypothesis, you have to be able to test that in vivo on actual organisms, preferably uh, human organisms. And uh, I don't think that's ever been done. So that means that maybe azelic acid works, maybe it doesn't work. And I think when it comes to the really theoretical stuff, I don't want to risk anything theoretical on my hair. I'd rather stick with the stuff that we know for a fact works, like finasteride, as well as topical anti-androgens, like topical finasteride, topical RU5841, uh, chemicals like that. Because, you know, if I take something like topical azelic acid and I rely on that as a standalone treatment, and I lose hair, then, you know, I'd have to get a transplant to get that back, and I think that's just not worth it right there. So, going back into my history with the drug, I have used it, because I was looking for a finasteride alternative when I started using minoxidil, because uh, like a lot of people, I was terrified of the side effects of finasteride. Now, fast forward today, I've been using finasteride for a very long time with no set negative side effects whatsoever. My only regret is I just is that I didn't start on finasteride, and I withheld using it for such a long time to the point where I actually I needed a hair transplant because I lost my hairline. And it was all just because of the fear mongering that was being spread around online that's still going on uh, to this day, which is a shame because it's preventing a lot of people from getting on treatment. But anyways, 
I came across the azelaic acid solution. I was like, you know, that's that's really promising. And I was on minoxidil at the time. And the minoxidil uh, was the, my first treatment. And I used it as a standalone treatment for uh, a couple of years. But then I started to lose ground again. And I started to lose ground pretty significantly. So I was thinking, okay, I need some sort of uh, treatment to target the DHT since minoxidil is not hormonal in any way. So I went on the uh, azelaic acid solution and I was losing hair at the exact same rate. So um, anecdotally, I can say it didn't do a thing for me. And I notice a lot of people who say that they um, are using azelaic acid and it helps or people who are already on some other treatment like finasteride or dutasteride. So I've never heard of any good examples of people using azelaic acid as a standalone treatment and it actually working. So I really wouldn't trust it. I don't think it's a proven product right there. I mean, if you want to use it for acne, uh, by all means, go ahead. But I really think it's important that if you're going to trust research, you want to make sure that the research that's being conducted isn't just done in like a Petri dish. Make sure it's like actually tested on human organisms. You need to be able to actually test a hypothesis. It's not good enough to just have a hypothesis. So uh, uh, that's my opinion on um uh, on topical uh, azelaic acid, I think it's it's fine for what it's prescribed for, but the the hype behind it being an effective hair loss treatment, I just don't think there's enough evidence behind it, and I would not recommend it as a as a topical anti-dandrogen. I mean, in good faith, I cannot recommend anything that did not work for me personally. That doesn't mean I think you're full of shit if you used it and you think it does work. And if you really really want to try it, go ahead. I'm not telling you what you should do in your quest to save your own hair. I'm just sharing my own experience with you. And with that said, I do hope the information I provided was useful. Thank you.